What's up guys? Today we're going to be building the best monorail for long distance travel in LEGO Fortnite. I will be building this in sandbox mode for the unlimited resources, but I will not be using the fly feature in order to show you all how to construct the entire thing from start to finish. There's a lot of similar designs out there, but they are all full of flaws, and so far this has been the only one I've tested that's held up. To start, you will first have to build a staircase to your desired height. If you're having to build over mountains, you can actually align your LEGO character's head up with the top stair. It's about three stairs down from the top. And look straight ahead, and it works as a pretty good indicator to where your track will be hitting on the mountains. When you reach the top of your staircase, we'll be using the wood foundation number four block. You can actually squeeze and hold the left trigger to enable snap mode which will perfectly align your parts together and then squeeze the right trigger to place the part. You will place these for however long you're wanting your track to span or however much wood you have in your inventory. These do use two wood per section which is more than some other designs out there but this monorail is designed to last and for repeated heavy use so it's one of the trade-offs for a better system. Once you reach the end of your track you're going to want to place a stopper. Use the foundation number one block and place it in the middle of the track. Then build a large wheel vertically on top of it. The wheel will help prevent damage to the stopper and the train car for the times that you're rolling in too fast and can't stop quick enough. After returning to the start of the track, you will need to build a service area below the platform so that you can place and build parts onto the train car. I'm using the rustic wide floor number one block and I'm just kind of building a space below the track so that I can reach the train car above. Now for the fun part, building the train car. To start, place two wood foundation number one blocks on top of one another in the middle of the track. This will elevate the dynamic foundation enough so that we can get the wheels underneath it. We will also have to build an additional stack of two wood foundation number one blocks, exactly eight nudges in front of the first stack. To nudge the part, you can use the buttons on the D-pad. We are ready to add in the dynamic foundation. Center it up on the two temporary columns and build it elevated off the track. Since the dynamic foundation sits so high off the track, you will need a staircase to access the top. I'm using the rustic floor number one blocks and I'm placing it in the top right corner of the dynamic foundation and leaving a one nudge overhang off the right side. This overhang is what's going to give us the tolerance needed with the track below to keep the whole thing from breaking or falling off during normal operation. We are also going to have to add one strip of rustic thin floor number one block off the left and right overhangs that we've already placed. This provides the anchor point for the plank railing used later. We will now travel down to the service platform and build a couple of staircases on either side to get us closer to the train car above. We have to add plank railing number three to the underside of the dynamic foundation on the left and right sides. You will want to place this just barely on the inside of the perimeter of the dynamic foundation. Once that is finished, you'll need to use the same plank railing number three to build a stack of three high below the floor overhang that we built earlier on the left and right sides. This is going to act as a guide for the train car and keep it mostly centered on the track during movement and prevent us from rocketing off the side. Before we begin adding wheels to the underside of the train car, we're going to want to build a stopper on this side. If you bump into the dynamic foundation resting on the temporary columns, it will launch off the track, destroy the entire platform, and you'll have to restart the entire build. Trust me, it's not fun. Same as before, place a wood foundation number one block and place a large wheel on the top. Now the train car is ready for some small wheels. These are going to be placed in each of the four corners. Try and keep them at the same level height wise to achieve peak performance from the monorail. You 
you can now delete the temporary columns supporting the dynamic foundation. Once those are gone, you should be able to run into the platform and send it rolling down the track. Onto the rocket boosters, in order to achieve dual direction capabilities from a single platform, we will need to take advantage of the LEGO Fortnite physics. We will start by placing a temporary column in the back center of the train car, and then placing a wood foundation number 2 block on top of that. Next, walk behind the train car and place two small thrusters on either end of the wood foundation number two block. Once in place, you will stand as far away from the temporary column as possible while still being able to hit it. You will destroy it entirely and let the thruster block fall and hit the floor of the train car. If the thruster block snaps together with any part of the train car, it will destroy the thrusters and you will not get the blast powder back. However, by using a block that does not possess the capability to build off the sides, for example a chest, we are able to securely pin the thruster block down and keep it from flying off the platform when engaged. You can nudge the thruster block into position once chests have been placed down without worrying about losing your thrusters. There is still a possibility of the thruster block twisting up and rotating 90 degrees which would cause operational issues. To prevent this we need to lock it into place from the top. To accomplish this I am using the rustic thin floor number 1 blocks, creating a stack of 4 aligned with the front of the train car. For the fifth one you will nudge it back into position over the thruster block and this will prevent it from rotating. All that's left now is to add the thrusters to the front for the reverse movement, which I've placed on the dynamic platform itself. You will then need to add some activation switches for each set of the thrusters. This will allow you to engage the thrusters when needed and move forwards and backwards. That wraps up the initial base design for this monorail. There are plenty of other things you can add to it though. Here I have attached a portable cabin equipped with a bed, chest, and crafting bench. This is a great addition to have when traveling long distances. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you all have any questions in the comments below about the build or if there's anything I can help you with getting a successful monorail going.